Have you ever wondered why so many relationships fail? A lot of it can be attributed to communication mistakes. How can we actually resolve this? Let's dive right in. Hello and welcome. My name again is Fola and welcome to the platform Essence by Fola. Here we talk about empowerment, leadership, life, lifestyle, relationships, career advancements and everything under the sun that affects you and I. So today we're going to be talking on a very very interesting topic. One that I started initially and um, I did get some great reviews and um, feedback on the topic on communication. I am a business transformational leader, a project management professional, and a life coach. My passion lies with people, and for me, it's all about impacting lives, transforming lives, and adding value as well to everyone. So why don't we get into the video for today? I introduced communication mistakes that can affect marriages in my previous video. You can actually check that out from a description. I'll have a link to that below. When we think communication, it's one that um, it's it's verse and it's um, it's got different aspects to it. I feel when it comes to we pass the information across, it just goes beyond you said, I said, how I feel, how the other person actually feels. Are we actually communicating effectively? and how does it work in your marriage. For effective communication, information that is sent has to be received as intended. When you communicate as the sender, you are responsible to make sure that the information is clear, concise, without ambiguity. What does that mean? You may even have to repeat the information you've sent and clarify if needed. Do we really do that? You may have to repeat the information as I said before and ensure that the receiver understands the intention behind the information you sent. So let's explore some tips on how we can build our communication skills. How can we make it better? How can we ensure that the information that we are putting across is received? As intended. When you communicate as the sender, you are responsible to make sure that information is clear, concise, without any ambiguity. It means that the information that you have sent has been received exactly as you intended. You may need to clarify, you may need to repeat the information maybe once or twice, that's okay. Just make sure that your spouse on the other hand understands the intention behind it and is able to respond accordingly. Now let's explore some deeper tips as to how we can build the skills and how we can be more effective in our communication. One, I say always put the issues you have in front of yourself and your spouse. It's not about attacking each other. Rather, ensure that you are looking to resolve the issue, not working against each other. Because it's actually a teamwork, right? Marriage is about team. Two, focus on the issues. Pick your words carefully. Do not diminish each other. Communicate no matter how tough it is. Make sure you stick to the point, which is what I call communication that is actually respectful. So make sure your communication is respectful as well. Words are like nails. Once they go in, just like when a nail goes into wood, it leaves holes that cannot be, you know, that cannot be fixed. Even when you try to fix the holes in the wood, what happens? You can still see the scars in there. So we can actually deal with that in our marriages. Pick our words carefully. Always keep your spouse in the spotlight. Communicate and make sure that you give room for everyone to express themselves. Let them be able to talk without interruption. There's always gonna be time for feedback. Listen to understand. Make sure that you are not just pushing your, your point across 
and not even being able to back down at, at all. If there is a point you want to make, it's okay. You can make a mental note of it and later you can then come to it. But make sure whoever is talking is able to express themselves fully. That way you have a chance to obviously have your own rebuttal at the point. Be specific. We have a tendency of like rattling away so many issues come in and then we have so many things model up as well. But when we stick to the point, we keep the focus on one issue at a time, that way it's easier for us to deal with the issues as well. Another point is, I can never overemphasize this, improve listening. Listen, listen, listen. Practice active, active listening. That's one of the biggest issues that um, I have also faced as well. You know, where we just communicate and then it's all about bashing in. I want to just express myself, but just hold on. Once you listen, we reduce misunderstanding and miscommunication. This way you're clarifying, you can actually confirm later on and we understand that we can remove the barriers that adversely affect our comprehension. We must also be able to be slow to speak, right? That also ties into communication as well. One, one point I will always also say is when it comes to talking and when we listen, there's also an intent behind the words that we've actually chosen to, to, to communicate about. So make sure when you speak, the intention is clear. Your body language actually speaks that as well. It's not like you're saying something, but you mean something else. That's another piece. Uh, I think that's number five now. I've mentioned a couple. We need to respond appropriately by providing feedback. Now it's time for you to give feedback, right? Feedback. This way we can ensure that the information we sent has been understood. We can then say, for instance, I heard you, you expressed your views regarding this particular point. I believe this is why I said this or this was why this happened. Is that actually the case? And give, giving room for the other person to actually respond back to you. You get into trouble when you don't look at your spouse's best interest or rather the interest of the family when you just badge in and you just, you know, run away and just say whatever comes into your mind. Think first. How do not diminish each other? I cannot overemphasize this. The words we speak are huge, especially the one that comes from your spouse. We need to make sure that we understood. We need to make sure that um, whenever just arguing because we, we want to win. No. At the end of the day, it has to be a win-win situation. Ensure that the issue you're talking about doesn't lead to another. Stay focused, stick to the issues, and don't argue against each other. Argue, you know, for one common purpose. I'll give an example. Earlier on in my marriage, my, sp my spouse and my husband and I, we had different approaches to communication, communicating. I'll say he used to be like a yeller and um, his voice gets louder and louder when he feels that his points or he's actually not being, being heard. And for me on the other side, I was more of a thinker. In my mind, I process things and my words and my expressions are slightly different. And I just retract into my, you know, myself. When I feel that I'm not heard, I just coil back in. When tempers are raised and stuff, things never even go, go anywhere. So we need to ensure that we check that and we ensure that that way we are not hostile to each other, we're not creating a hostile environment. We all can come to the table and get things resolved. We need to result, we need to realize that bad, a bad day does not mean a bad marriage. All marriages have got bad days. All marriages have things that we deal with every time. So when we have hurtful feelings, that's okay. Remember that we can walk through things. We are in need to win it together. And also I think it takes away the anxiety of like walking on eggshells. Egg you know what it's like? At least you know that the intention of your spouse is actually real. Remember, don't win arguments. You both win together. I hope you enjoyed the video today. I can't wait to see you on my next video. And one thing again that just came to mind is keep my mind as well. Another piece when communication breaks down is to get help. You don't even need to wait for things to even break down before you get help. Get a counselor, get a support 
um, like couple as well, maybe who are older or more experienced, they can help you walk through your issues and challenges together. Thank you so much. It's always been a blessing and I appreciate you taking time, you know, to sit and listen to me through um, this particular medium. I appreciate you. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Till my next video, have a good one. Thank you.